difficulties. No, it's, it's, <laughs> It zooms always funny because I can see you guys and it's telling me that it's connecting and everyone's like always like trying to yeah, yeah, they're always like, <laughs> like what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> right on guys. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So my part uh, the podcast is all about um, your journey in the music industry and you know, how you guys got to where you are today, starting ghost town remedy and, and all that fun stuff. Sweet. Or, like an origin origin story <laughs> sure yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. the origin story and can i and i love i just listened to your guys new song i love it therapy it's awesome and the video hilarious especially Thanks, with man. like the, the <laughs> like act the jazzercise like in front of the old thing <laughs> yeah. i was uh, actually following uh the richard simmons Sweating to the oldies. <laughs> yeah, made me sweat a lot. <laughs> That's awesome. And I love on your Instagram, you guys say you're Nashville rad dad rock. Are you guys all dads or is that just a joke? No, it's a joke. No. <laughs> Sad, sadly, we're not all dads. At least that we know of. We got the dad bods, but uh, just not the but kids. But not the kids. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Um, cool, guys. Well, yeah. So uh, are you both originally from Nashville? Uh, no. no, so we're actually from uh, Nova, which is Northern Virginia. We're like a, uh, we grew up like an hour outside of DC. The small Both you little, guys did? Mm-hmm. Small we little town okay. called we, uh, Warrington. Yeah, we grew up in the same, yeah. same county. We kind of lived near each other, but like we like, went to two different high schools. Like rival oh, okay. high schools. Yeah. Like, I'd always sure. see them in, in marching band. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> way back, way back in the day. Okay, so you, you, did you guys know each other in high school and stuff, or just not really? Aware actually, that, I, yeah, I like, knew who he was. Other than okay. that, I, was a, I met I met Steve like one year after I graduated high school. So I was in like a uh, community college for like a minute before heading off to like a real school. Or, okay, uh, sorry, like music school. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and uh, so I met Steve uh, doing a Christmas pageant of all things. <laughs> like, there's like this thing that our the church that i went to growing up uh they did this thing every year where they build this giant steel christmas tree and they funnel all the people into it and they sing in it but like i'd play in the orchestra and get paid i really? found a loophole yeah that's <laughs> and cool so i did that for a long time and then one of the years i think actually like it was the first year i that they decided to put me on guitar which was a mistake <laughs> and they <laughs> had him on percussion or for something. some reason so, and it's like the flip yeah we, we do the flip in our band so i'm the yeah. drummer and he's the guitar player and then so yeah we were we were like the house band we were like the pit orchestra for this like yeah. production thing and okay. somehow somehow ended up like figuring out that uh we liked both liked weezer and liked that kind of shit <laughs> so nice yeah, went with that <laughs> So TJ, how'd you get into music originally? Um, so for me personally, uh, my dad was always playing a lot of music around. Like he was ma- mainly a lot of like Southern rock and like metal and stuff. Uh, okay. So I kind of like grew up listening to like a lot of Leonard Skinner and like Molly Hatchet. So cool. like yeah. still still a lot of good guitar work. Sure. And then um, basically when I was 13 years old, I actually started on trumpet first, but uh, yeah, so I was in band, but then one day my dad kind of just randomly, there was like a package at her house and like randomly just surprised me with a guitar. Wow. That's cool. uh, I guess the the rest is history. Yeah. It was like a really like (laughs) cheapo, cheapo Ibanez, like hundred dollar guitar. Yeah, yeah, it's like right over here on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so I still have it. I'm holding That's on to that cool. one. That's cool. Yeah, of course. So, Rad. Sure. You said you played trumpet. Was that what you played in the marching band in high school? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> we were we were a bunch of band geeks uh, who decided to form a rock band, basically. <laughs> That's rad. <laughs> well, That's tell me about move. how you got into music, Steve. Uh, I also came from a very like musical family. My dad played guitar. My mom sang all the time. Um, oh, cool. And <laughs> funny story, actually. I They gave me this, like, really ratchet, like, kid <laughs> drum set. Uh, and I would, like, play along while my mom was doing the 
sweating to the oldies. What? I'd, I'd play, oh, dude, full I'd, circle. I'd, I'd play, like, was that her and tape? And, was that no, her tape you guys are using in the video? In the video if, she, if she still had one, I would have definitely grabbed it. But uh, so when I was when I turned eight, I had a cousin that he taught himself to play drums, and he gave me his first drum kit. Oh wow! And it was this old like knockoff Thor kit, and it, it didn't have bottom heads on any of the drums. <laughs> um, just a, like a normal five piece. Okay. Two rack toms and uh, it was spelled really Thor like T H O R God of Thunder. Yeah. <laughs> like what? I've never even heard of that. Brand. I know exactly. It's like their, I, their emblem was really cool. It was like like a hand grasping this like lightning bolt. It was rad. But uh, <laughs> you so should get I, an endorsement with that. I, and see if they're still around. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, so kid kit. Oh yeah. yeah for sure. No bottom heads. <laughs> uh, I I took lessons throughout like I was eight until I was 12 and then I decided I wanted to try and branch out a little bit and I started taking bass lessons mm -hmm. around that same time I was also in school band and I played the trombone of all things oh and you weren't in the the drum line or anything no, well <laughs> I, I was like my senior year of high school because I decided that I would start doing that again but I kind of <laughs> okay. like jumped around instruments a bunch uh eventually learned some guitar and in high school, I started a band uh, with some friends of mine, and we would play in our like local scene and mm -hmm. dick around more or less. Yeah, <laughs> like, we didn't, didn't really, really take know it what too we were seriously. Doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We played like every genre imaginable, and uh, <laughs> it was just fun to you know get people out and yeah, just jam. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Um, Did you start any bands in high school, J uh, TJ? Um, I was in a metal band actually <laughs> before all of this happened. Oh, really? So my my first band was like, uh, it was like Christian death metal. <laughs> I, I don't know how I don't know how I ended up in that, but like, that, that's not, yeah. <laughs> it was like MIT. MIT. Or I remember there was like a bunch of bands. Of band. It was like an the, acronym band. Acronyms. Yeah. Okay. It was like, there was like yeah. four or five. It was just weird because like our little town of warrenton had a pretty decent music scene which i don't know if which doesn't every make other sense to me small because town around that same time had the same kind of thing yeah it like, was it was a county that had more cows than people but somehow there was a good music scene like that doesn't make any sense that's people crazy. would let us play just about anywhere and yeah. we'd play like Royton clubs and community centers and wow that kind my of thing. my wife just texted me and she said that she taught uh, she did her student teaching at the Warrington Middle School. What? Did what? You guys Are you there? serious? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't go there. I didn't go there, but uh, I I went to the middle school like down the street. Really? What? Yeah, she, Taylor. She said Taylor that she school. did her her student teaching there for um, uh, home ec. What? <laughs> That's wild. That's insane. Yeah, crazy, huh? She's just texting me. She's like, "Hey, tell them." <laughs> and she. <laughs> She usually does the podcast with me. That's why her logo, uh, our logo's down there. But we have oh, two, okay. two two kids, so she's down there hoarding them, um, <laughs> trying to you know wrangle them up. But uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah. She just sent me a message, so I wanted to bring that That's up. That's crazy. <laughs> nice. What are what are the chances? Of I know that? a bunch of people that went there. When uh, when was she teaching there? Uh, I'll ask her. Right now. She should just chime in. Two thousand seven ish. Can... There she okay. is. 2007. 2007 so yeah, we were in high school yeah i was at Fauquier high school so oh, i was like right i was right was down it, the street from you i was at liberty <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's insane yeah i loved the snow days for sure dude uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> there was wait with 2000 2007 the year i think when 2008 was when we had that giant ice giant ice storm thing yeah. <laughs> that shut us down for like three weeks no, yeah. no no that was later that was uh that was wait that was 2010 okay yeah that was later somewhere in there, there was <laughs> I, ice storm and it, like knocked out school for like three weeks oh so my you, gosh you probably awesome. got a fair sh fair amount of uh carousel ice cream then i'm guessing yeah i actually was able to <laughs> to uh i had like the the middle school credit card so i could get the home ex supplies so <laughs> mm. oh. <laughs> nice <laughs> Wow. What's carousel ice cream? 
it's, it's like, like this little ice cream shop that's like right there on the corner and uh like oh it's a, by like, the high school or yeah, by it's the like, middle school it's like right by it's, both of the it's schools like in between those two schools oh yeah, funny and, uh, <laughs> it was it was, it was like solid they had it, all sorts of stuff. It was like old school, like dip ice cream and everything. Like they would, oh, they would, like, yeah. they would like dip it with like the chocolate shells, like soft serve with the, the yeah. with the dip. Uh, the dip. Oh, they have like that. flavor swirls. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> what are the you, you wouldn't know that's it's so a origin thing. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, she texted me. I'm like, what are you? I'm like, the school that they are talking about. She's like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> what are what are the chances? Like most most of the time when I say that, I just tell people DC because no one's gonna know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. All right. Well, so tell me. Okay, so you guys met in the. In that uh, Christmas pageant thing, play right? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> and were you? Were you? Is that was the first time you guys met each other? Was was doing that? Uh, I think thing? like I think we knew about each like other. Passed by. We were like acquaintances, but we never like actually hung out or hung anything. Out until then. And then from there, how did you guys get to Nashville? Like, did you form the band in in the DC area? Like, tell me about that. Oh man, this is a long story. Yeah, we'll we, we'll try to do it quick. So we started. We have time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we had started a different project. Um, that was I don't even know how to describe it. We also it, like genre bending. It was a, yeah. It was like it was weird. It was like rock, alternative rock, and then like random like folk stuff and reggae. We, we were in. We weird. I personally was like into the whole Mumford and Sons thing when that came out. So we started mm-hmm. off as like a folk band and now we're like the furthest thing from it. But, uh, <laughs> but basically we started this band together. It didn't really work out. Like we were really just doing it for like a, a year. I was in college in Savannah, Georgia, and I was like coming back and forth and we'd play gigs like when I was back. Yeah, we uh, both ended up in like different colleges and stuff and they were just like, all right, whatever, we'll table it for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, we were still writing music though. Like every time uh, Steve would come back for like summer or winter break or something, like we would yeah. still hang out and write songs. And, oh, cool. Uh, I think around 2012 is when we first got the name like Ghost Town Remedy. Like we got that name. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he was, he was at school at Shenandoah Conservatory. And I had graduated and I would drive up to Winchester from Warrington and we'd jam and write, record. Like most of our gigs were in Winchester, like around that area. Yeah. Um, And yeah, we were definitely more on like the folky side of things, which like it was fun to play. Not really my wheelhouse. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I thought it was my wheelhouse at the time, but then I I, I don't know. I think it was the thing to do. Yeah, it was time. it was kind of a fad at the time. I mean, mm-hmm. I still love like all that kind of stuff. Like, uh, it's just I, I guess not what comes most natural. I guess right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but cool. Um, so we went through like a handful of different lineups during that time. We had like a cello player at one point. Yeah, and it was there. It was there was too many people. Banjo, okay, violin. There, we had like eight people at one time. It was like one of those giant like bands that had like everything. We had like upright bass, accordion, accordion, accordion violin, yeah. like oh, okay. mandolin, <laughs> like everything. It was <laughs> you know folk. All folk bands had like twenty people back then. Like sure, <laughs> Edward Sharp and, and the magnetic, magnetic zeros zeros, or whatever, yeah. <laughs> and like fourteen people in the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so. <laughs> It was one of those situations, and that's actually how we got the band name, is because, oh. like, we would always joke around that, like, oh, yeah, we have enough people in the band now to, like, fix a ghost town. <laughs> like. We could all live in one. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so, uh, that's kind of where that came from. Um, but eventually, like, the folk, the folk version of that, we kind of ended up taking a break because you... You moved out to Portland. Yeah, I moved to the West Coast for a year. Oh, okay. Um, just to see if I could do it. Like I didn't have anything lined up. <laughs> just <laughs> just moved to it. Portland. Yeah. Yeah. And just free balling it. <laughs> yeah. Definitely a year of life lessons. Um, but <laughs> I moved back and he had been hounding me about coming to Nashville because he had already moved down here. Yeah, I went oh, to Nashville. 
we I went to Nashville right when Steve went to Portland and like okay. um during that time I would never stop like calling him and being like hey when are you moving to Nashville <laughs> like when are you when are you coming down here so we can like get the band back together right. like mm-hmm. <laughs> and so things didn't work out in Portland I moved back to Virginia to just like save up a little bit of money and moved down here and got it all started again and we ended up uh tj lived with our bass player and he knows of our other guitar player and we just kind of like jammed i think when i first came down it was to do an album release show because we had been working on this album for like (laughs) a pseudo album i guess Yeah, yeah so um yeah we I, Steve came down to do this like this one show. I never thought he was gonna like actually move here. He was just visiting Nashville to play one show, mm-hmm. and then I guess ended up liking it. And I bugged him enough <laughs> that he finally ended up moving down here. <clears throat> so we played with this lineup, which most of us have remained. We had a keyboard player, but we kind of scrapped that. Yeah, and so you yeah. guys, so you had a, a CD release show. For- for ghost town remedy right which um it's an album that's on it, Bandcamp. yeah so. it's an album that we have since kind of like taken down because it like was kind of f- on the folkier side mm-hmm. so we, we've decided like once once everybody Riff. came or once steve came down to nashville we met up with jordan who plays guitar and then rich who plays bass and uh from there we kind of i guess reimagined yeah. the sound like we rebranded yeah, okay. we went. We we kind of did like a one eighty from the folk stuff, and then eventually, I was just thinking to myself, like, this isn't really like how we sound live anymore. Mm-hmm. And we had had some issues with some bookings. Um, yeah, like booking <laughs> agents would listen to it, and they would try to put like all these singer songwriters and folk <laughs> bands on the same lineup as us. And then now we're like a like a big old chunky power pop. Garage rock, and we'd play, and they'd be like, "Where? What was that?" (laughs) (laughs) So it it got it got too confusing for like booking Uh shows and stuff. We're just like, "I, we gotta take this record down." So we're we're basically in the past like two years, we've that's kind of where I consider the start of like Ghost Town Current proper. Okay, yeah, because I'm looking on your Spotify, and and it looks like the the first song it shows you released was Super Glue. Right. Yeah. So that's yeah. just before that. We had a okay. full. We had a full record. If you go to our that. band camp, it's on there. <laughs> yeah. If you're very, if you're really, curious. if you want to dive deep, it's <laughs> it's hiding on band camps. So. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I went to your iTunes link and stuff. I didn't see it there either. But okay, yeah. I'll have to find it on the band camp. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, so you yeah, so you moved, so you went down, played the CD release show, and you decided to. You're going to move there? Yeah, I had a really great time when I was here. Um, And so I started saving up all my money and drove down here with all my clothes and my drum set. And And you actually, the way you packed it was ingenious because you had a pretty small car. He packed all the clothes inside Inside the drum set. Oh, there you go. (laughs) He like took off the heads and then used all the space inside of the the the, the drums the yeah. pro tip for any drummers listening yeah if you, if you awesome. have to move that's the way to do it <laughs> that's awesome so. and yeah so we moved down here and just hit the ground running and started playing shows and recording and yeah uh, so, so tell me about you know you guys are all in nashville and you just started trying to book like local things around yep. the area yeah because we we were really like I had been down here about a year before Steve got here and okay. we we were pretty much like we didn't know anyone. It was all green. We literally Very didn't fresh. know anyone. So we just started mm-hmm. playing every show we could and uh we didn't even really have like proper music out to like represent <laughs> right. the sound of what we were playing now. Mm-hmm. So we just yeah, we just played as many shows as we could and it's slowly like I feel like this year it's finally felt like it feels people, like things are know of us around yeah. here like before then there's like oh yeah i've never heard of you guys yeah most people haven't <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean they they Ain't say it's the like way. a five-year town or whatever so we're at i'm at, we're four, ahead of the, I'm at four years ahead of the curve <laughs> yeah, so. 
<laughs> well, so that's so. Tell me about putting out these um, these singles. Then it was just okay. We're gonna scrap that old record. We're gonna just focus on these new songs going forward. And then, do you even play any of those old songs anymore? Or no. Uh, we'll break them out occasionally. Very, very rarely. My my brother requested like, we played one on one of our live streams, so we did that. Yeah, only but. if someone like requests like deep cut, <laughs> we'll be like, all right. Well, it depends we'll on it, the, it depends on the deep cut, I think, because I don't think yeah. we're gonna play <laughs> River Runs Dry. So like, yeah, soon. every once in a while. But yeah, so uh, we, as a collective group, we have enough equipment that we can like self record ourselves oh cool and so we were able to cut the cost a little bit um so yeah so we did super glue first um and that's just re- that was all re- uh, recorded and mixed and everything from you just by you totally. guys yeah yep. wow uh all of them right well well the newer stuff pr- pretty much actually <laughs> all the released? stuff all the stuff <laughs> is, is self-mixed our our basis is a like incredible engineer and uh Mm -hmm. so he's he's helped with a lot of tracking of the the stuff and uh he does the the final mix and everything on it so like of the stuff that's out right now therapy is the only one that we recorded in a like in a a real real studio the rest was recorded in our living room wow pretty much yeah (laughs) so yeah it's like a little home like like project studio kind of thing but yeah we've, we've got enough gear to where we can like track like full bands all live at once and stuff so yeah it, and we've done so we did a video for super glue we did a video well we did videos for all of them I guess, yeah, yeah. And, now. and a lot of our videos we do on our own like diy like editing and filming and all that stuff mm-hmm. so we we try to do as much in-house as possible yeah we, we're capable of it it's just so, a matter of <laughs> doing finding it. the motivation yeah. <laughs> it's like forcing ourselves to yeah got it got it so yeah so like you did all the videos yourself even like mm-hmm. i'm watching like i just looked at super glue like super he, super glue yeah, we like had, the whole like medieval <laughs> yeah. thing going on like yeah <laughs> we had um one guy, it was like a video guy, came in. And- yeah, one of our buddies came in and uh, he shot it to make it look like it was like a early 2000s YouTube video. That was kind of the vibe we were yeah. going for. Okay. Like, <laughs> we, we want this to look like a home video or like Jackass or something. We don't want sure. this to look great. Yeah, right. like look we want it to look bad. Homemade. And uh, <laughs> that was, <laughs> we kind of ended up like editing it in a way because we had to go to his house and like, coach him on what to do we wanted for what we wanted which is like we're so great we make these storyboards where i'll sit there and i'll draw pictures for like all the different scenes but like you like yeah it's wouldn't look at it for what so that that was the only that was the only video that we didn't really edit ourselves and since then we've decided like we're just gonna edit everything ourselves because like we know exactly what we want for it and it's like it's hard to communicate it's hard yeah with people that don't with no. people that aren't in the band right. it's kind of yeah i don't know yeah it's kind of like in yeah like inside joke type stuff that it's kind of yeah, yeah yeah it's like with with editing it's like you have like a vision of where you what you want it to look like and it's so hard to get that across to somebody else even with the storyboard i mean we gave them a storyboard yeah mm-hmm. so it's like but since then we've we've pushed more towards doing like everything ourselves yeah so, yeah so we did we did land party and 360 no scope and those were both um more or less lyric videos and land party was shot entirely on iphone oh wow through, through well, an iphone app that makes it look like all a, well it's, it was mostly it's an, it's an android it was yeah oh, okay sorry there was an android. <laughs> all right yeah <laughs> but it was it was like a cell phone video basically got it that's cool we, we were using this app to make it look like um there's like a vhs old school video camera kind of uh filter to it uh-huh yeah so we just started grabbing footage of whatever we could <laughs> yeah <laughs> i like it well so tell me about so, uh therapy so that's the newest song is that going to be part of a record yes or is it just yes. a single so um we're we're actually uh planning on releasing a record in august um so that's that's coming up pretty quick, mm-hmm. and um, 
all of the singles that are already out are gonna be on it. We so those are all yeah. just kind of leading up to it. There's a re redux version of Super Glue. We re recorded that, but the okay. others are gonna be yeah. The others are all gonna be the same, the same. version. Um, I think there, there's also one song from the very first album that we re recorded. Oh yeah, the also. the album that got scrapped. We we took one song from that and we're like, all right, we'll save this song and re record it. Oh okay. <laughs> so like one, of, so one of them is making one it. One made the stay. cut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so with this new record, are these songs you said you recorded therapy in like a proper studio? What about the other ones? Um. So I think nine out. So it's an everything 11, except for land party. And, yeah. It's uh, three sixty no scope. It's an eleven track record. Okay. So um, nine of them. yeah nine yeah math you know nine <laughs> of them were recorded at uh. We, we ended up getting a good deal over at uh, Sony Nashville. So we had like a proper, like real studio that we did the initial like tracking at uh, just for the rhythm tracks. And then we brought the sessions back to our home studio to do vocals and guitar overdubs and all that stuff. Oh, okay. And that's what you'll hear on the album. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, so it's really a combo of what we've been doing of like the DIY home studio, but then also like, We've got a, we were able to get a bigger drum sound and everything by using a proper room and mm -hmm. uh, just crank the guitar or crank the amps up better and get like better, just bigger yeah. sound out of it. And we brought on an engineer so we didn't have to turn the knobs at the same time, which was oh, that's good, nice, exactly, yeah. So, so yeah, rad. And are you guys putting that out on a label or is it all just DIY still? Um. I've, point, sh the <laughs> I've shopped it out to a couple labels, uh, but I think we're probably going to release it independent. Currently. Oh, you have? So you had, yeah. So I've had I, conversations. I, I have actually uh, been sending it out to some people. So, you know, just to see what bites and everything. Mm -hmm. But um, nothing set yet. Sure, so. sure. Yeah, man. Oh, I, I really like the song. I think it's rad. I love the sound. It just, that whole like, just the sound of it has that, like, you know, that pop punk, like, t undertone to it that I, that's like my favorite type of music. So, like, when I heard it, I was like, this is nice. rad. <laughs> yeah. And uh, one, of, one of the things we love doing, and you'll hear this on once the full record's out, but just like, we try to like add little bits of prog stuff, as in like dropping beats, oh, yeah. adding beats, but we, we try to do it in a way that's like not noticeable. Yeah. Right. Or it's, it's subtle. A, I, like, like I subtle, noticed, subtle, right? like I know it's like a subtle like like uh in therapy like there's one point and you have like this like it's almost like a medieval like metal like guitar it's like doo -doo -doo, like you guys are like <laughs> yeah, yeah. together you know what I mean like, yeah, like yeah. little like from I'm trying to think of a band that like Dragon Force is it Dragon Force <laughs> that metal band it kind of reminds me of that oh like my god doo -doo. <laughs> yeah just just wait we the, we the, yeah just about that's just the start song? of it like song oh which one holy hangover oh yeah you'll you'll hear it on the next one there's even there's even more of that like dual <laughs> harmonized thingy we let <laughs> the guitar players loose <laughs> at the end of the next song on the we're next song out. yeah um, okay i love that it was rad i was like whoa that was cool like it was just not i wasn't expecting it <laughs> yeah we we really love the harmonized or like dual guitar solo thing. Yeah. So that that happens in a lot of our tunes. Listening to a lot of like classic rock and Yeah, I mean like I obviously I grew up listening to like some of that southern rock stuff and like uh -huh. Molly Hatchet, they do that harmonized guitar thing all the time. But then also my dad kind of introduced me to like Boston and stuff like that. Oh my god, yeah. So that, yeah. that's like where I really heard it for the first time like wow, this is really cool like dual lead guitar on like every song yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, we do that we do that a lot cool i'm excited yeah i thought that was rad and i ate the video and stuff too like when you guys do live shows i know you're talking about how like you had like the folky sound in the beginning and it was hard like when you kind of changed uh bookers were like uh oh like did we put them on the wrong bill or whatever like i feel like your guys's like energy is very like 
like you don't take yourselves too seriously kind of like the jokey videos and stuff does yeah. that kind of come out on stage a little bit like, <laughs> yeah maybe a little too it, much it probably comes out even more actually. really yeah. Yeah. so uh, uh yeah what we we try to like really let loose and go crazy when we play like i am like always on the edge of probably injuring myself when, <laughs> whenever i'm doing yeah. a show uh, um, we bring along these uh, we've got some gimmicks and some props and stuff i was gonna say you see you yeah. guys sound like like i i could see you having <laughs> props i was gonna ask yeah, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have, um these, we've got these like wacky, uh, wacky wavy. wavy inflatable yeah. tube guys oh that really they, my like, kid loves those things yeah, <laughs> yeah. so i've got this like uh kind of like i've rigged this remote on my guitar that will turn them on and off so I could oh, like, wow so i could like press it during the show and we've got two of them so they'll pop up on each side of the stage <laughs> and start yeah. doing this <laughs> thing and like nobody expects them to pop out either so i always place them like near whoever's in like the front row so it'll pop out and like yeah. hit them like <laughs> usually the, the first time they pop up it's always great like I usually can't see back from where I am because I'm not wearing my glasses when they fly off. But like, <laughs> a lot of times we'll get pictures back of the first time they go off, and the people in the crowd are like, <laughs> <It's> "Like <laughs> what? <laughs> what is this? Where did this come from?" That's you know, there, awesome. there's there's always that point, like maybe like three quarters of the way into your set, where if you look out and like somebody's just doing like this, <laughs> and then that's when I want to hit the button and be like, mm. "Wake up." <laughs> like we're at a we're at a rock so, show yeah. like, alarm guys coming out yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome i i had a feeling you guys probably did some pretty rad stuff like that yeah i mean since then the only person i've seen to do that is cory uh, wong, Corey wong <laughs> that like funk guitarist funk. i don't know if you've heard of he him plays uh, in, uh, he, he plays in wolfpack wolfpack yeah and he, um, he'll he'll pop out the inflatable arm guys yeah, or he, just does some weird stuff like that. He he does he's got he those live also, but his are bigger. But I, I think he also plays bigger. I honestly videos. think we had it first. <laughs> I think we did have it. I think it we first. had it first. Maybe he <laughs> saw one of our videos. <laughs> <laughs> he could have. <laughs> yeah. Could have. yeah. Um Yeah, and our uh, Jordan, our other guitar player, will always wear these like really crazy outfits. Yeah, he, he goes over the top um it's great though yeah he's he's like i never know what he's gonna wear yeah that's a th like that's a that's a thing <laughs> shows up it's, it's just like, like oh yeah this is this is good he has these like sequined shoes <laughs> he's got yeah like he's these diamond tour, studded right? like almost like it reminds me of paul simon or something like yeah. diamonds on the solar shoes <laughs> like he's got these sparkly shoes and then he's always wearing like this giant like space visor thing yeah. that like i don't know like what and we can't then, make sense uh, of it <laughs> rich, it's just it's a free-for-all rich our bass player he he likes to do up the um the nashville look so he'll wear like when we first started playing he'd wear a full suit like, <laughs> a cowboy yeah, hat we call him the outlaw he's he's uh, often he's often okay. wearing like a full cowboy like garb <laughs> Like. I, I, yeah, well, even on your your Facebook page, you put you put that he's the outlaw, but you instead of it took me a fi minute to figure it out, but you label him as the low guitar player. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is low guitar? Oh, I get it. Really, really low, really low guitar. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny, man. And I well, also did see, I like, yeah, you guys are hilarious. Like, I love the stuff that you're doing. Like, even on your Spotify, like you you have. And a playlist that you guys created, and it's called Stuff We'd Like, and it's the Weezer Blue Album cover with your guys' faces <laughs> over all theirs. Yeah, we, we, we definitely get into the meme culture a bit. Yeah, man, it's so good. I love Actually, it. somebody once called us a meme rock band. I didn't know that was a thing, but... I, I don't That's think it is. That isn't a is a thing, I don't think. <laughs> but you guys should, you should start pioneering that as your... Yeah. <laughs> I mean the 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 dad rock thing is funny, but you should all. I mean, you should add that to it. I think like meme rock is probably like the next level. Did we? Yeah. Rock. Did we? Get that <laughs> after we played All Star. Yeah, we. I, maybe it was after that. Yeah, it's probably. We, probably there was it. a point where we started throwing in the the classic from Smash Mouth. Uh, oh, you would cover we, it. We would yeah. throw that into the set, and 
we've got this like cardboard cutout of Guy Fieri that comes <laughs> with us on tour, and like we would like throw him out in the audience and stuff, and because you know he's the singer of Smash Mouth, of course. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Well, so t- uh, what have you guys been up to like with this lockdown? Have you been doing like live videos on Instagram or doing anything like that? We've done two live streams. Uh, the first one was full of gimmicks. So oh, yeah. It was... We we were basically tired of watching people play in their pajamas, so we <laughs> just thought of all these we're like, gags. How can, how can we be different from the millions of other live streams? He dressed on? up like Joe Exotic. Uh, oh, right after, <laughs> right after Tiger, right after Tiger King came out, it was like that week that I I went all in too. I shaved. I went down to the the Fu Manchu deal. Oh yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Um, the leper, like the gold leopard print T shirt and all that stuff. Yeah, I don't remember what we had. I don't even remember what you were wearing, but I had like kind of like a like a Hawaiian shirt that had like some kind of like. uh like flames jungle. or something it was like yeah. no, it was like a jungle design but with like unicorns and shit on it uh, <laughs> our uh <laughs> rich dressed up like like it was like the future he was wearing this like silver toga or something it, it was, was like weird. yeah visor I, I don't know how to describe it the, but fa- it just... the, the fashion sense is all over the place in this band i don't know <laughs> we, what we're wearing half the time we more or less just wanted to have fun with that one um and then well, we, you you dressed up like post-apocalyptic yeah I tried you to like, do mad like max on mad it. max style um <laughs> and then we, we did another one that was more or less true to form and we had a uh, full band. We had a <laughs> procured some webcams so we could like switch different shots around. Oh, and, and you guys were all playing in the same room? Yeah, yeah. that that okay. one um, that was hosted by a venue in Nashville that I work at. Um, so oh, I, cool! I, I run sound over at this venue called uh, Marathon Music Works. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like a big old like two thousand cap room that has like it's like pretty decent sized shows and stuff. And uh, they reached out to us about being one of the first bands on their live stream series, uh, like once the lockdown was like really set in, like a couple weeks in. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, so we did a podcast through them, and that's up on our YouTube channel, actually. Oh, cool! So, yeah, like yeah. like the whole thing is up there, like a whole live performance and stuff. Yeah, yeah. we had the uh, the tube men in that one, right? Oh yeah, yeah, we did have the the wacky wavy guys. I think we actually had them in both. Uh, I think. Oh, cool. Like, couldn't leave them behind yeah um <laughs> so we've done a couple of those um we also filmed all of the therapy music video during the lockdown, during the lockdown. Yeah. oh really which that okay. was that was kind of a challenge actually we uh, had to make our house not look like our house yeah yeah <laughs> we we're filmed like it all in our house really we, yeah <laughs> we were like how do we make a music video look good with no extras and like almost no outside help. Like we, we brought in one of our friends to help uh, just be like camera op. During, and, the, uh, during the live shots, we filmed everything else. Yeah, and we transformed our garage. Like we had to put up like black backdrop and everything and like try to make it not look like our garage. Oh, so yeah. that, that's like the oh, main, wow. perf- that's like the main performance shot of the video. Okay, so I'm, yeah, I'm clicking through right now. Who owns it, the, who actually owns the VHS player? <laughs> but, uh, I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> it, it was it broken. Work. Actually, it doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> had it. we used it for a prop. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, I I actually, it, that's like the first shot of like, oh well, they actually had a VHS player in their house. <laughs> well, when when we grabbed it, it was in the trash can. It was so. in the gun. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was like right about to get thrown out. We we're like, wait, 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 we need that for the no. video. Hold up. <laughs> uh well that's cool that you're able to shoot i mean shoot it all your house you couldn't tell i mean i couldn't tell it's it's crazy how well it was done tried really hard to make that and like actually uh probably the next couple that we're gonna put out are also probably gonna be in the same boat so Mm -hmm. yeah we i mean we had we had a tour you know not every one of our videos has been shot oh in the house house. really super glue was all at our house (laughs) oh Wow, you're right. Lamp, okay, well, so Lamp Party was like kind of everywhere, but we, yeah, we, we don't a have lot. a music video that hasn't had at least one s- scene in our house right. yet. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> Do all you guys live together, or just the two of you? Uh, three fourths of us. So, oh, cool. Uh, 
uh, myself, Steve, and Rich, who's on bass, we all live together. And then okay. Jordan, he lives about like five or ten minutes away. He lives super close. So we basically, cool. it's it's pretty easy for us to all get together. Yeah, yeah that's good. So, nice. And, and you said you had a tour scheduled and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had a tour in May that was scheduled and that got postponed till next year. Uh, we were supposed to be playing this big like punk fest up in Canada, up in Montreal called Puza Fest. Oh, uh, I don't I don't know if you've heard of it or not. Yeah, I have. Yeah. That, I think who's some re- who's headlining it this year or was supposed uh, to be? it was Propagandi. That's who it was. was okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it was. I saw I I did see that. That's cool. Uh, the anti flag or uh uh we we played it two years ago and oh, yeah, uh that's when real were. real yeah. big fish was headlining okay. two years ago when we played it so oh uh, I, I found the poster melancholin good riddance yeah. wow that would have been a great show yeah we were we were really excited for it we had a whole tour planned around it where we were going to go all the way up the east coast and stuff and back down through like midwest and everything and it was probably gonna be like three weeks or so of shows and it's a bummer. Uh, yeah, yeah, so just uh, uh, how where were you guys going? East Coast and up or West Coast? Yeah. Uh, East Coast up, uh, basically like through our hometown up through Brooklyn. Um, can't remember how. Yeah, like we were we were gonna hit in. like uh, Asheville, Raleigh, Richmond, DC, like all the major cities going up up East Coast, and then up to Montreal, <laughs> Toronto. <laughs> uh chicago uh Saint i don't Louis. think chicago was on this one it, it was what? gonna it was gonna be toronto and then down to uh erie over oh, to columbus right. oh cool down to probably cincinnati or louisville or something so it was it was gonna like kind of snake around back to nashville have you guys done any other touring i mean have you done a lot of touring yeah we, we've, we've done, done a decent amount um we haven't got out to the <laughs> west coast yet though so oh, where, I was gonna where, ask. Where, where are you guys where are you guys located again we're in san diego oh, okay just, nice. just oh. south of la yeah nice my my buddy lives there and i oh, keep right. telling him we're gonna play san diego sometime. yeah we've, we've been telling him for a while like we need to get out there so <laughs> yes i know yeah, i was gonna should. say you need to play san diego <laughs> the, the, the furthest west we've been so far is texas like, oh so wow. we, we, yeah. we need to we we got some ground to cover and that was that was on our uh that was definitely on our list for like once the album came out, we were like, yeah, we're going to like really start like hitting the touring and obviously like virus hits. Like yeah. so mm-hmm. <laughs> touring sure. industry is kind of dead right now. Uh, so it's, it's been good in some ways though, because um, we've been able to really just like hunker down and just work on stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. So we've, pretty much finished the whole record like a lot of the overdubs it's basically done we're pretty much in mixing Mix mode phase. and then we've been able to just work on a lot of like content like just making a lot of videos making a lot of just dumb instagram <laughs> videos like whatever i posted today <laughs> like just crazy crazy stuff yeah your guys instagram is funny man i will tell you that. <laughs> like just some of the the pictures and like the little memes that you guys have created are funny like the we, we the social media one like linkedin facebook and oh, no. oh, <laughs> so we, we've got this friend uh his name's sam schwegler and he uh he's a host of a podcast as well except um it's it's a little more it's diy just, it's just all memes it's all it's, it's like yeah, it's, the it's, meme cast it's absolutely <laughs> It's absolutely crazy. Like I listened to your podcast and I was like, "Oh, this is a real podcast." Yes. <laughs> I, I forgot what it was. I forgot what it was like going on a real podcast. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. And uh he he runs this like fake account. Yeah. It's only it's like Ghost Town memes. And Okay. Well, no, well, no, it's called Town Town Post. posting That's or right. something. Yeah. But he will just most of the time he just sends it to us like via text 
and we just like sit there like oh my god this <laughs> where, where, <laughs> when are we gonna cross the line because yeah a lot of his, times... his stuff is always on the line of being like whoa that's fucked up yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> a little much Sam. <laughs> so he'll he'll send us for ever since we did that first podcast with him he got our numbers he texted us every single day there hasn't been a day <laughs> this is like maybe a year ago when we first met him there hasn't been a <laughs> single day where he hasn't sent us like a hundred memes and uh so this guy he's a meme lord okay and uh he would start creating these memes about the band and we eventually got to the point where we we're like you should just make a page for it and like <laughs> he did so he, and i, I didn't <laughs> he think did. he was actually gonna do it and then he made a like an instagram page that's like solely directed or for our memes or something yeah. <laughs> like oh it's just your band and then memes about band. your bands yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so good he gets the biggest thrill out of that oh, yeah. that's that's funny yeah i strongly but, advise you to like not ever look at them because like, <laughs> some, <laughs> some of them like they're always on that line of like whoa this is yeah. fucked up and he's he's always getting flagged from instagram like they're always like taking <laughs> always. his voice down and stuff <laughs> oh, really? yeah. it's like all right, you, you, you went too yeah. far on this one <laughs> like <laughs> Well, that's yeah. funny, man. And then, if you really want to get like into the nitty gritty, start reading the comments because we've started attracting trolls. To <laughs> oh, really? On, stuff. on your actual band's account or on his? Yeah, yeah on it's our weird. Account. We've, well, this is very recent. Like within yeah, this... the past week or so, we've been getting a lot of trolls. So just I've <laughs> against uh, talking about what, like, uh, just, just on your pose. Yeah, just you know. yeah, just weird stuff. Uh, but we just go with it, and instead of like egging, well kind of i guess you'd call it egging it on but yeah i, yeah. I like to i like to mess with them <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah you got to I mean, so i i i try to i try to actually respond to like just about every comment we get it gets sometimes it gets overwhelming but like uh we try to stay relatively active even though mm-hmm. like i personally hate social media but it's like one of those necessary evils yeah. sure yeah so, what about um releasing your record during quarantine is that gonna be weird have you guys thought of maybe not or was that a so, conversation definitely tossed around the idea but i think it, what we've come down to is that since everyone is in quarantine mm. and i mean at this point like things are reopening but yeah a little bit like, but as far as like touring and stuff and playing out it, so yeah initially it was weird because like i raised the question like like we wanted to release a record right before we could do a tour like that's how mm-hmm. everyone does it i guess sure yeah support so, where you just released but but we eventually just had the conversation of like we're sitting on all these tunes like they're almost done like we might as well just put it out and see what happens and mm-hmm. people don't have anything better to do yeah so. i mean got a lot yeah. of extra time to to listen to stuff and yeah, if we but, can promote it during that time and then hopefully get some yeah, but, of a so, following or something yeah hopefully by then. the time uh we can tour again like i mean people will have already been pretty familiar with the stuff right yeah they'll be able to like digest and and know the songs when you, right. when you play them and stuff exactly yeah because a lot of time like i don't know like I guess it, in the case of like a big band, like say like the Killers, they put a record out and they're touring, and it comes out in the mid tour. Like people don't want to hear the new songs because they don't know them. At right, least right. this way, exactly. like they're gonna know the tracks because they've been li- sitting on the album for a little bit. Right. So like we're yeah. we're planning on releasing in August, and uh, that let's say like whatever, like touring opens up like early twenty twenty one or something. That mm. that would have given them like six months to digest. Yeah, it. like yeah. plenty of plenty of time to to know the songs and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. and then and I think before then they'll you guys yeah. will be able to play a little like smaller shows. I bet. Before. Yeah, we we've got we have one festival which is like a pre Bonnaroo festival, mm-hmm. and uh, it got rescheduled to September, but that's still still going, before it's Bonnaroo. still happening. So Bonnaroo also got rescheduled to September. Did it get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bonnaroo yeah, got both rescheduled. Of them got re- I saw Bonnaroo got rescheduled. Yeah, this this is uh this is a thing called Music Tree Fest and it's like it's also in Manchester, Tennessee. So it's the same same town, but it's like the weekend before uh, Bonnaroo. Bonnaroo. Got it. 
Yeah, because so they they ended up can't. I mean, Coachella out here got they moved it to October, and then now it's just done. They're, they're right. They they pulled the plug. So at least they haven't oh, done that yet. They didn't even reschedule it. They just pulled the plug. They altogether. rescheduled it, and then they just pulled the plug on. Uh, wow. Monday. Yeah. Oh wow. I, yeah. I miss that. Yeah, I guess it's supposed that's... to happen in October, like like two weekends in October, and then they, I think it's something with the state or the the regulations. They didn't want to like chance it, so they just pulled the plug. Wow, but but that's California, so maybe it'll be different in Tennessee. You know, you never know. I feel like I feel like they're <laughs> still so gonna go tell. through with. I, I don't know how they can go through with Bonnaroo, man. There's so many I people know. there. It's like yeah, I know like Coachella is like a hundred. 90 or 100,000, I think. I don't know what Bonner is at, but it's yeah. it's got to be like over. I've only like, been once and it was. It's got to be like over 70. It was overwhelming. Like, it was there's, a lot. Got, yeah. there's a lot of people. Like, it's the biggest. I think, festi- yeah. It's, it's the biggest be festival huge. in, in like Tennessee. Like, pretty much. Even just like in our even area. Even just like this, like kind of the southern region. It's like one of the biggest festivals. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be there. You know, it's still, yeah. still going. You guys will get to play that, so that's cool. Well, it thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? You know, you could be lifted by that. You never know. Exactly. But. For well, sure. Well, thank you guys so much for doing this. You've been hilarious, and this has been so nice. much fun. I really appreciate yep. it. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. Man. Yeah. I have then, one more question for you. I want to know – I'll get, see if I can get an answer from each of you. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Woo. Um, my – so like if, if they're just like just starting out like absolutely nothing yeah or, like i want to how do you get in the music industry i want to i want to do this what would you have any advice to this person <laughs> so my advice and this is for like any kind of creative endeavor is just do it like i you have to start and starting is the hardest part if you can start like Get your friends together, make a band. If you have a band, then someone will know someone that might know someone. Use the use your connections, play a show, make more connections, talk to as many people as you can, and you just keep that cycle going. And For sure. but yeah, the biggest advice is you just gotta start. You gotta start. Love it. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of to, to follow through with that too. Just say yes to everything. When you're first starting off, like, like, oh yeah, somebody wants you to play a show that's at like midnight, and there will be like two people at this bar. Just go play it. Like, mm-hmm. if nothing else, it gives you experience playing. Right, and, and we can all pair rent and experience, so we'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> so, but. uh yeah, I mean, just just be persistent, um, uh, and just I guess say yes to everything. When you're when you're starting out, once you get to the point where you can say no to things, then you're like you're starting to get somewhere. Yeah, you know you, you know <laughs> so, you made progress, and also yeah. don't give up. Like that's if you want to do it, you I keep doing it, mm-hmm. and eventually, somewhere down the line, it may take years. Like, I don't know how long it's going to take for us, but I don't have any intention of giving up because I love doing it. Bring me the best world.